do you blame carnivore for having a stroke? And, you know, I didn't just have the one stroke. The last one was the worst one, but oh, I had wow. four to five previous strokes, according to my MRI. Was so, Hey, Tom. So uh, we're talking today exactly. because uh, you had a stroke and you're you're not in the cool carnivore club anymore. You quit. And I wanted to hear your story. I wanted to hear your side of the story. Oh, it's just like uh, before I had my stroke, there was a lot of people that were just interested in interviewing me. I had some interviews scheduled before I had my stroke and they just kind of canceled and didn't return my emails anymore. And, and, you know, I didn't just have the one stroke. The last one was the worst one, but oh, I had wow. four to five previous strokes according to my MRI. Was, so, do you blame carnivore for having a stroke? Do you blame eating only meat for having a stroke? Because I think that's what people are no. scared of. Right. And that's, uh, you know, after I had my stroke, I said I had to start eating a salad once a day. And I was going a little more keto for a while. Yeah. And it was because I was constipated because I was on really high doses of nifedipine to get my blood pressure down. Yeah. And that really made yeah. me constipated. So oh, wow. eating like a salad and some fiber every day. It kept me going every day rather than every three or four days. So it didn't just sit there and get the moisture sucked out of it and turn into a rock, you know? <laughs> oh, um, no. Yeah. Um, so um, I'm since off of the knife at now. So I'm back to normal. Okay. But, um, you know, so I had really high blood pressure when I had my stroke, it, 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 they took it in the ambulance. It was 270 systolic. I don't remember the bottom numbers. Um, they took it at the hospital. It was 310. Oh, and then wow. they took it again and it dropped down to like 280. Um, so they, they took me down for a CAT scan right away to see if it was a bleeding stroke or a clot type stroke. And because if it's a bleeding type stroke, they can't give you clot busters because you'll die. Mm. So... They discovered that I didn't have a brain bleed going on. It was actually a clot, clotting type of stroke. Um, and it was in my cerebellum, uh, so mm -hmm. like the back of my brain, brainstem area. So that really affects, like, my vision was all double and getting blurry. Um, I was, uh, had no ability to, like, balance or walk anymore. <laughs> like, I could barely wow. stand up and move from one bed to the other. Um and I just really felt like if I would just lay in bed and turn my head sideways, everything would start spinning and I would get nauseous and throw up, you know, it wow. was, it was really, really bad. Um, but they gave me that clot buster. They got it on board within like, I'd say about 20 minutes of the onset of symptoms. By the time the ambulance got me to the hospital, they scanned wow. me real quick, but it was definitely within 30. And the clot buster didn't reverse any of the symptoms I had, but it stopped them just like in their tracks. Wow. So, so if you would you have possibly died if you wouldn't have have done yeah, it? So <laughs> we have like a teleneurology machine where this neurologist comes on from a real hospital. Like my little local hospital is just a little local one. It's not mm -hmm. like a great big one. So the yeah. He's got like a, like a special machine robot thing that like lets them examine you and stuff. And he said, you know, there's a 6% chance you'll die if you have the clot buster. And if you start dying, there's nothing they can do. Right. Mm -hmm. You're bleeding out. Right. Um, and so I was like, well, I don't want that. And he said, well, you're just at the beginning of your stroke. So by the time it ends on its own, you could, you know, at the worst, you're going to mm -hmm. be dead. And the mm -hmm. best you're going to be more of an invalid than you're going to be, you know. Mm -hmm. And so I said, well, let me tell my wife my secret password and, uh, and uh, you know, I'll, I'll do it. And so they gave me some medicine to take my blood pressure down below 180. And it like I thought, like, they're never going to get it down that low that quick. And mm -hmm. they gave that to me in like three minutes. I was 160. Wow. And then they gave me the cluster. Um Wow. And so then I had to spend the next eight hours in bed in the ICU. I wasn't allowed to get up. Uh, and I had to pee really bad, but I could not pee in this little plastic cup thing they were giving me. You know, there's just yeah. something in my brain that said, no, you're not peeing in a plastic cup laying in bed. You know, <laughs> So um, 
then they put me on some kind of uh, Flomax medication yeah. with, to help me pee. But that's like for if you have an enlarged prostate, which I don't, I never have. And um, it doesn't take effect until like a couple, after you take it for a couple of weeks. So oh, wow. I just waited until eight hours and one minute. And I was like, it, you're going to help me get on the walker and get to the toilet, you know. And then I was fine. So I didn't even know that the flow max, because they gave it the name Tamsulosin, it's generic yeah. name. I didn't even know that was uh, a thing. I thought it was like a blood pressure medication or whatever until like a month later when my cardiologist, uh, my first cardiologist looked it over and said, oh, are you on flow max? That's for if you have an enlarged prostate. Like, no. Oh and God. I went through all the other medication. It's like, oh, I'm on that Tamsulosin. They're like, oh, that's flow max. So I quit taking that and that's why I had to go see the cardiologist because my heart was like skipping beats and beating really fast and acting weird. Well, that's one of the side effects of Tamsulosin. Oh, so wow. as soon as I quit taking that, that problem went away. Yeah. But, uh, they did a full um, scan. I uh, did all the tests. They did the stress test. They did the... Um, a nuclear scan. They did a uh, sonogram uh, or sound thing where they put a probe on you and check your heart. Um, then they did a CTA scan and then they did a coronary calcium score. So my all that showed that my heart's a little enlarged on the left side from the high blood pressure, mm -hmm. but it's still okay. It's not like in danger of failing or anything, but it's starting to get a little enlarged. And, um, I have no blockages anywhere in my lungs, my heart, my upper abdomen. They said my upper abdomen's grossly unremarkable, which is good. Uh, what, grossly and, unremarkable? Oh, <laughs> okay. I, I understand. <laughs> um, and then my coronary calcium scores a zero. Oh, wow. So my, Do they my know heart, how? Sorry. How did this whole stroke thing happen? Do they know? Do you know? Well, it, they're saying, you know, you had high blood pressure, but that usually causes a bleeding type of a stroke, mm. not a clot type of a stroke. Mm -hmm. But you can get a clot and it can break loose. And, you know, just from sitting with high blood pressure or whatever, you could get a clot and it could go to your brain. Um, but, you know, they've done all the tests. They've scanned my kidneys and they just I've been in the CAT scan machine like 20 times for different things. Oh, my goodness. Everything. Everything's good, but okay. so over forty percent of people that have a stroke, they don't know why they have a stroke. Oh, you know? okay. They're All not. Right. Yeah, I don't know any of this stuff. I'm just curious yeah. because people want to know what happens you're on carnivore and you had a stroke and you're eating all this meat and it must be the meat that you're eating. You yeah, know? and so my current cardiologist, who is an old cardiologist I used to see in another town, and I got an appointment with them, but his appointment was three months out. So I, I saw an, I saw my vegan cardiologist here in town, who was <laughs> all like, you just don't need to eat the meat, and blah, blah, blah. And, and that, that's why he kept running all those tests, I think, because he was determined that I had to have blockages. In mm. fact, before my CTA scan, he told me, well, I can just go ahead and do a cath and, and, and go in there and inspect it. That way, when I find the blockages, I can just put a stent in. And I'm like, oh no, goodness. we can just do the CAT scan. Right. And, then, you know, like, uh, finally, on my last appointment, he admitted, like, my heart looks like the heart of a 20-year-old other than the fact that it's a little enlarged. There's no mm. blockages. There's mm. no problems. Um, I have really good heart valves that close really tight and don't leak, I guess. Um, yeah. So everything is looking good with it. Um, so now I'm just on, uh, I'm down to seven blood pressure medications now, trying to get this blood pressure under control. So sure. like the, I always had really high blood pressure. And then on carnivore, after I lost a couple hundred pounds on keto and carnivore, my blood pressure started to come down to 160s, 170s, and it just got to where I didn't really even take it anymore. And that day, it just decided to spike up, and it's mm -hmm. deciding. I've noticed, like, I'll have some days it's really good, and other days it just spikes way up. Wow. And they don't know why. Um, 
I'm curious so, on those days, are you like under more stress or something? Is there something like a stress event or something that spikes it? No, I'm, I'm really not a stressful guy, especially <laughs> now that I started the carnivore diet. Life's just yeah. like going, you know, great and easy. I've never had any type of anxiety. I've never had depression, you know, none of that stuff. Um, awesome. Um, so I don't, I don't know why it's high. And they said okay. my blood pressure is it, like, they've done all the tests for all the common things like tumors on my kidneys, renal arteries, like stuff like that. Um, and um, they, they said my blood pressure is just idiopathic. Like they don't know what causes it. Okay. So my current well, cardiologist. Yeah. Tell me about that. Um, he's he, I told him like, look, I'm, I'm a carnivore mostly I eat lots of meat and fat and you're just going to have to deal with that. And I'm not taking a statin. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> and and uh, I was like, if that's a problem, then I'll have to find somebody else. He's like, well, your triglycerides came back at like 36. So I wouldn't even care if your LDL was like double what it was. In fact, oh, it should wow. be a little higher. I was like, oh, you understand lipidology. <laughs> you understand. You that's didn't just read the Lipitor report. Right. And so um, he just said, like, the carnivore diet didn't cause this and your 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 veins and everything are fine because um, they also did an ultrasound of my neck and checked mm -hmm. all those things. And there's no blockages or any problems there. Um, I just he, he wants to get my blood pressure down. So he said, like, 180 is really like you get above 180, you're getting into stroke territory. But. Uh, so we really want to just keep it below 160. So he pulled me off two of the medications. Oh, um, wow. so I was um, on nine and now I'm on seven. I'm glad um, you're, you've got a good cardiologist that understands cholesterol yeah. and lipid panels and isn't blaming meat. You, yeah. You know, so this. I'm pretty much, I, I think I'm perfectly healthy. Every blood test I have comes back normal, except my LDL was a little elevated. So two days after I had my stroke, my LDL was 121. Then they took it a month afterwards at my doctor. It came back at 121 or no, at 114. It was 121 first. And then I just had it done and it was 104. And like my... HDL is always above 80, um, and my triglycerides are always really low. They were 36 after I had my stroke, but they went up and they were like 60 this last time. Okay. So um, those will, will vary, but they're well under their 150 mark every time. Yeah. So, um, I'm happy about that, Tom. <laughs> People don't know who you are. Um, you were and or are following keto and carnivore and you've lost like, a, you said like 300 pounds. No, like 200. It's 200 just a little pounds. over 200. And I'm just kind of hovering at that little over 200 mark now. I'm not mm -hmm. really gaining, not really losing, but I'm wearing smaller clothes. So Great. today I noticed that my 2X shirts are getting loose and nice. I'm, wearing, I'm on a size 38 pants. Uh, so when I started... My last weight was 458 pounds, but I I didn't weigh right before I started. So like six months had passed between that mm. and me starting. Okay. So I was I was pushing every bit of 500, I'm sure, because I used to put on like five to ten pounds a month. That's <laughs> um, fun. <laughs> I was on 300 <laughs> units of insulin a day, slow and fast acting. Mm. Um, I still had A1Cs in the 14s. Um, I, I don't to, know why you're alive, but I'm <laughs> happy you are. <laughs> I tried to follow the ADA diet back then, but mm -hmm. you could follow it most of the time. And then you go out to work, you'd be at work, you go out to lunch, you go to a pizza bar and you'd be like, I'm just getting a salad. And then you'd be like, right, oh, I'll right. just have one piece of pizza. Mm -hmm. oh, I want another piece, you know, and, and then you go off of it because you were so angry, hungry all the time. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I don't know. I, I, I've understood blood sugar being low and angry, hungry, even though I've never had like diabetes, but I do understand that concept of angry, hungry, <laughs> angry. Yeah. You're just not getting enough to eat. Like, right. 
so they have all these recipes on the American Diabetes Association diet, and you're supposed to eat like a little quarter cup of this and a little eighth a cup of that, and mm -hmm. you just you never get enough, and you're always hungry, mm -hmm. and you just you you finally fall off the wagon, you know, and you're like at the store and you see a pack of chips ahoy, and you're like, I'm buying those and eating them on the way home, you know. <laughs> Oh man, it's terrible. So then how long were you doing carnivore before this stroke happened? Um, probably about 10 months. Um, oh, okay. So, and then before that, you I was 200 keto. pounds in 10 months. Oh, no, no. oh so okay. I lost the majority of my weight on the keto diet. So mm. I started a really clean keto, but lots mm -hmm. of veggies, but really clean. And I lost like a hundred pounds in six or seven months. And wow. a bunch of that was water. Um, okay. And then it slowed down. And then my keto kind of got dirty. And I started saying, oh, they have keto cupcakes and mm -hmm. keto snacks. I'm going to make yep. some of these keto special French fry things out of almond flour. Mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and then my weight loss slowed way down. Uh, but I still lost like another 50 pounds or so over the next few years. Okay. And, and then I just went carnivore and started eating pretty much only meat. And I mostly ate beef. Okay. Um, and then I, I've never been like a pure carnivore, though. I will occasionally have some spaghetti squash or some onion or some mushrooms. Like very sure. rarely. But, okay. Um, you know, I didn't have like a great big bag of veggies with some chicken, you know, like I used to. <laughs> Very keto. That sounds like my my attempts at keto. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, you know, I I lost some more weight, and then um, I was like at three fifty, I think, when I started carnivore, and then okay. I, I lost about another 80, 90 pounds. That's so crazy. That's I mean, that's incredible. That's like quite incredible. Yeah. But now now you're done. You quit, right? <laughs> quit what? You quit carnivore or uh um... well, no, no, I I'm still I, I that's why I tell people all the time I'm still mostly carnivore. I mean yeah I, I'll have a couple pounds of chuck roast and I'll have mm -hmm. a few green beans. Okay, you know, I, you know, I, know. Um, and I don't do that every day, mostly on the weekends. I Saturday and Sunday I'm allowing myself a couple of keto meals and then through the week, I mostly just eat once a day, and I'm just eating beef. Like when I get home from work, I sit down, and tear up some chuck roast, fried and bacon grease, and oh, so then uh, I'll, I'll also have like chicken thighs and stuff once in a while. Um, but then on the weekends, I'm a little bit more keto. But I've I've not had any of the salads, mm. but I really like salad, and I really make my own special keto clean keto salad dressing and. Mm -hmm. You know, and but um, the main thing is like salad takes forever. You have to sit there and chop yeah. everything up and get it ready and put it in little bowls. And, you know, <laughs> it, it's easier to throw some chuck roast in a pan fried up and some bacon grease. Sure. It's a lot easier. Oh, yeah, definitely. I've, I've spent a lot of time making salads before. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. like salads, too, but um, I think they disagree with me. I don't know what vegetables disagree with me, but I haven't gone, I haven't done any testing to see really. Like if I eat onions and tomato, I'll get like, uh, my stomach feels off and I don't like okay. to feel off. So I kind of stick to it, but I love salads. I do. I love salads. People don't believe me. I love salad like you, but I just, the time and I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> Yeah, so I, I've noticed like with tomatoes, the tomatoes I buy at the store really do cause some irritation, a little bit of swelling, inflammation. Mm -hmm. But the tomatoes that I grew in my garden, I'm fine with them. I, oh, well, I, because like, I've made salsa and pasta sauce and stuff out of them. Mm, and I really think, point. well, that's because like they pick tomatoes when they're still green and then they ship them and then mm. they put some kind of gas in them in a room and it turns them red but they're not technically ripe yet. So you're still eating green tomatoes that are full of more, more toxins than a sun ripened tomato that's ready to be eaten because it wants its seeds spread around. It's a, you know? very good point. It's um, a very good point. So, so like most of the veggies I grow, I've had people comment like, well, all your veggies are full of Roundup and pesticides and this and that. Like, no, do I really just 
mostly, I mean, like I was buying salad back, back then, but mm -hmm. most of the vegetables I eat now are ones that I grow them in my own garden and then store. You know? Makes sense. Um, um, if I don't grow it, I mean, I might buy some peppers when I run out of peppers, but um, I dehydrate all the peppers that I grow and then I'll rehydrate them and put them in some chuck roast or whatever, you know. Okay. Um, so I really don't like shop in the vegetable section that much. Um, my spaghetti squash, I grow those and then they just store on the shelf. I just put them on a shelf in the basement and they'll be good a year later. So, wow. I had no idea. That's yeah, there's a few, shelf of them. Life. a few of them will go moldy or get mushy because they'll have a little nick in them or something that I didn't notice, mm -hmm. but most yeah, of them yeah. stay good for a year. I'm still, I still have three more spaghetti squash left that I harvested last fall. So Wow. That's really interesting. And again, a food that I love. And I remember last time I, I when I'm trying to be like healthy spaghetti, try that. It just like rips up my stomach. So okay yeah or it just feels so bad so i kind of get jealous when people can eat vegetables <laughs> <laughs> i can do yeah. avocados i can do pickles and, and i'm good with those um yeah. and but i don't really eat those a lot so i have a lot of people you know that like i i don't know they're they're really carnivore and i get it they finally found a diet that's working for them it's right. taking care of their hunger it's making them full they're getting all the nutrients that they need to live from it um and you know i don't eat vegetables because i want the nutrients i just think they taste good okay. um and um and so they get really angry that I still eat some vegetables or that I'm not 100% carnivore. And uh, Charger Mopar, I don't know if you know him. Rick, yes, I know Rick very well. Yeah. <laughs> so he says, like, you know, as long as you're eating 70% meat, you're pretty much carnivore. As long as the rest True. of the stuff is, like, not donuts, you know, it's pretty clean. Yeah, and, exactly. And um, But some people are just really angry at that. And then I have some other people, like vegans leave death, death threats, you know. <laughs> and, so, and so, you know, I just, I, I have like, I, it's like, I kind of feel like I'm hated by everybody now. You know? Oh my gosh, this is crazy. Well, I mean, you got the vegan police and you have the carnivore police. And I think you just need to do what's right for you because it's your life and you got to feel healthy and happy and go on your, go on your rides at, what is it, Kings Mountain? Go on your roller coaster yeah, ride, yeah, and, you know, yeah. shoot your guns and fix the cars. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, I, I mean, a lot of people, I get that they, they found something that works, but mm -hmm. they'll probably find after they lose their weight and get their metabolism healthy that they could still probably eat some vegetables once in a while, too. Sure, you know, sure. you just have to figure out the ones that aren't going to make you sick, that aren't going to right. inflame you or, or cause any problems. Yeah, exactly. But a lot of people are just totally like, you're only supposed to eat cows. If you know, I had a guy leave a comment the other day. If humans were supposed to eat plants, they would be, they would have some kind of cecum or something, and we don't. So we're obviously just supposed to eat the meat. And I'm like, well, humans have eaten plants for a long time. It's called bad hunting days, and you want to put a little something on your stomach till you can go kill something tomorrow, you know. Um, but a lot, you know. I always boil my plants, you know, okay. I, I cook them really good except for salad. Mm -hmm. um, but um, so that if there's any oxalates or other toxins in there, that helps get a lot of them out. And, you know, like my grandma used to boil her green beans until they were complete mush, you know, and now you go to a restaurant. I went to a restaurant uh, the other day, my family got together and uh, I got some, some broccoli and some green beans and I had chicken and the green beans are like practically raw. They're just like, they're crunchy. Right. So I'm like, I don't want to eat that. They're so, that's sure, poison. Sure. And the broccoli was the same way. So I just put that off to the side and ate my piece of chicken, you know, mm -hmm. everybody else was, it was a Mexican restaurant. So they were buying the big bowls of like nachos with everything and stuff in their faces and i'm just like it's just crazy <laughs> you know? it is crazy it is crazy and uh 
you know, when I visit family, I fall into the that trap. You know, I'll just try to be keto and then I just, you know, I just start eating whatever. <laughs> yeah. like, so, so you're doing good. Tom. Yeah, my birthday is coming up here on May the 26th. So nice. uh, my family is like, oh, we want to take you out and do something because it's going to be your 50th birthday. And I'm like, mm -hmm. okay, where do you want to eat? Like, I don't really want to go out to eat. Like, right. so... I'm like, let's go to the bowling alley. We can bowl. And they have food there that people can buy. But I don't have to, you know, partake of it. Mm -hmm. And I don't want a birthday cake with a bunch of icing on it. I'm not going to eat that, you know. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I just want to hang out with my family. But whenever my family gets together, they, like, debate. There's, like, this long text message. Where everybody's debating where do we want to eat. And we're like, well, I ate there last week. And I want to eat here. I <laughs> want It's like it's. That's the most important thing is where they're going to eat. And I'm like, I just want to sit and talk to people. Hmm. Yeah. I'm laughing because we're both from the Midwest. And this is so like the Midwest culture. Like, where are we going to yeah. eat? Well, where do we eat yesterday? What are we eating tomorrow? And um, that's definitely like a big part of my, my mom's side of my family's culture. So it's funny to hear you say that because outsiders that aren't part of the Page family don't understand like – why we always talk about food. And I, I mean, at least I could talk about steaks now, but this is definitely, so it's very funny. You're saying that it's very similar. That's all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Trying to, you know, just like, I guess my, my family's just still addicted to food. Right. So my mom has had anemia since she was a teenager. Mm. She's had to get blood transfusions for it, take iron pills. Crazy. And I, I, told her like try a carnivore diet and just eat red meat that iron is right. bioavailable you will absorb it like crazy right and right. she didn't do pure carnivore she's still like once a week she has some crackers and you know but she's doing a whole lot better but she really upped her red meat like crazy she went back and had her blood work done they're like you, you don't even need to take your iron pills your iron wow pills. that's <laughs> awesome that's awesome yeah it it's great. It's it's kind of magical when you eat the right foods. <laughs> when you get rid of, I think the biggest problem, here's the point. Here's my feeling. The biggest problem is the refined like canola oils, the seed oils, the ultra processed foods. That's the biggest problem. And when we start quibbling about a pickle, now we're kind of going crazy. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I agree. Or with a that. green bean. <laughs> like we got it. What's killing us is the junk food that people call ultra processed. Like that's the stuff that's the worst. Look, a year ago, I could eat an entire pizza. I could still eat an entire pizza, like a large by myself. <laughs> <laughs> and then feel terrible. Not mentally. I don't care. I don't feel guilty. But then physically feel terrible afterwards. And then later I'm craving it. And that's the, that's the vicious, is it a vicious circle or a vicious cycle? That's the vicious, whatever, vicious circle yeah. of the refined carbohydrate game that we're all addicted to, you know? Yeah, you're eating until you're stuffed and you can barely walk and you want to sit in the chair and sleep. And then a couple hours later, you wake up from your nap like, hmm, I'm going to go have a couple more pieces of that pizza. You know? Right. It's so crazy. Yeah. And, and that's the biggest problem. And I'm glad like we're talking now because I know you had the stroke and you think the doctors think you had five strokes and there's various reasons for that, that are not specific, but it's not the food. It's not the meat. Yeah, it's not. Um, you know, my neurologist was like big on the statins and I, because I've done a lot of reading and, or, and research about how statins work. And so they basically go into the liver and they stop the liver. It's like a, a 30 step process and they stop it on step three, the process that your liver goes through to make LDL. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, there's like a hundred other things that your liver does other, other than making LDL after step three. So that, oh, wow. that goes to other things. So you're kind of poisoning the liver, causing it not to make other healthy things that it needs, but then it doesn't make healthy LDL. So then you, if you're a diabetic or you're constantly eating carbohydrates, a lot of your LDL is broken LDL. It's the kind of LDL that it breaks and it can't dock with the liver to refill itself and it can't dock with the cells. So it just floats around in your body forever till it eventually becomes calcified and sticks to your veins. And that becomes hard plaque. Um, so 
now you're just not making the healthy LDL. And it also triggers the receptors in the liver to dock with LDL to remove it. So um, your liver normally docks with LDL to either refill it or remove it if it's not needed. And they trigger a process that causes it to remove more. Well, guess right. what it's removing? The healthy stuff, because that's all it can dock with. So now it reduces your LDL, but now you're mostly full of broken, glycated, unhealthy LDL. And you're not getting the healthy LDL that you need. And so LDL, does it, it happens to carry cholesterol, a little tiny bit of it, but it carries all your coenzyme Q10s. It carries all your triglycerides. It carries everything that your body needs to make new cells and make all your hormones. Every cell in your body makes cholesterol. And every cell in your body is made from cholesterol. Every hormone you have is made from cholesterol. And so the really interesting thing is the cholesterol that your liver makes, your brain can't use it. Your, it does not cross the blood-brain barrier. The LDL won't. Mm. So the, the brain makes its own LDL. So after you have a stroke and part of your brain's dead that controlled your balance or your vision or your speech or whatever... Other cells have to form new neuropathways and learn how to do those functions. That's crazy. Well, guess what it uses to make those new neuropathways? Cholesterol from LDL. Statins cross the blood-brain barrier and cause the brain to make less LDL as well. Mm -hmm. So when I went to see my neurologist in three months after my stroke, um, you know, she saw me initially and did a balance assessment and everything was like, yeah, you're going to have to go to rehab. It's going to be a long road. Three months I drove into my next neurologist appointment. I'm like, yeah, I'm back to work. She did a balance assessment. She's like, you're almost 100% normal. That's She's awesome. like, I can't, I can't believe that. And I'm just like, well, I didn't take your statins. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, exactly. And, and eggs are bad for you. Hashtag eggs yeah. are bad for you. <laughs> yeah, like I eat a lot of eggs. Like right now, um, the uh, the lady I get them from at work uh, has a bunch of chickens, and they're starting to produce again. So I'm getting getting all the backyard chicken eggs. Yeah. Oh, awesome! I love that. We just got one, and uh, we're gonna see if it'll lay eggs <laughs> in some months. We'll see what happens. Yeah, it probably <laughs> um, will. Yeah. yeah, I hope so. I hope so. Um, so, um, thank you for telling me your side of the story, Tom. I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad you're doing great and look at your recovery. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just want to ask one more thing. So there's yeah. a car behind you. We talked about this a little bit before we uh, started recording, but can you tell me what you're doing with this car? Yeah. So I'm just fixing it up to give it away to somebody in need. This one needed a new engine. So I'm, I'm working on getting the new engine put in it or a used one, but you know, um, and then I got to fix the air conditioning, fix some TPMS sensors, uh, get it aligned, get new tires for it, but then I'll give it away to somebody in need. So I used to be a mobile mechanic before I had my stroke and it isn't really that I'm not capable of still doing that. I just want to spend the time with my family in the evenings and weekends when I used mm -hmm. to do that. So I have this car here and if I want to not work on the car on that weekend and go ride the beast instead, it can sit here, mm -hmm. you know, and I can go do it. I don't have a lot of people like, I need my car back by tonight, you know? Yeah. Um, so that it works really well. But I just, I find like a yeah. single parent or somebody in church that has a big family that's really in need or, oh. you know, something like that. And then I'll just give it to yeah. them. And then I'll go out on Facebook Marketplace and find me another one and get that one in here and fix it up. That's really, that's really special. That's really nice. Like you're spending your time, your money, your effort to help people in need, but a car, people need cars. That's amazing. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, channels out there where people buy like wrecked Ferraris at auctions and they fix it up or Lamborghinis and, yeah. and those are really popular channels. But I thought, you know, I just want to fix the 2008 Chevy Malibu that somebody needs to get back and forth to the grocery store in. Nice. And there's nice. not a lot of channels doing that. Um, but those videos are also helpful. Like I did a video on how to rebuild the power steering bump on this one because it was leaking. And that helps out everybody else because that's right. a common problem on this car. Mm. And they'll see how easy it is to fix it themselves. 
rather awesome. than going out and spending a couple hundred bucks on another power steering pump. Sure. So cool. Well, I hope people come to your channel for that. They can hear your carnivore stories and hear your your car stories and how you fix cars. And, yeah. Uh, there you go. All right. Thank you so much. I'm glad we got to talk, and we'll talk again. You're not banned from my channel for eating green beans. <laughs> <laughs> I, I figured it wasn't bad from yours. So. <laughs> hey, everybody. Thank you so much for watching this far, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. If you would like to support my channel further, these are some items that are in my store. There is a link in the description, but it's also below the video if you are in U.S. and Canada. Um, check out this artwork. It's beautiful. It's my mom's original artwork, and I decided to pop it on a bunch of cups, cups and other things. We also have, like, pillows, all sorts of stuff. So check out the link. If any of this, if you'd like any of this, feel free to get something. I would love to sell a hundred thousand of these items this year. I know I'm a big dreamer. Um, but if you want to help with that and you like this artwork and you like these things, go ahead and get something and that'll support me greatly. Thank you so much. Talk to y'all later.